This is a photograph of Comet Neowise, uh, which has been visible in the evening sky this week. Uh, last week it was visible in the early morning sky just before sunrise, but right now it's very conveniently positioned uh, both in the sky and at the time of day where about an hour after sunset, if you look to the northwest, Comet Neowise uh, in a cloudless dark sky should be pretty easily visible. Uh, this photograph is a composite of nine exposures that I made last night from a location near my home in Flagstaff, Arizona, and I've shared it on social and a couple of other platforms, and folks have asked about the uh, process I use to composite the nine different exposures to create this single image, so I thought I'd record a tutorial video just to walk you through that process. So I'm going to get out of uh, full screen mode here in uh, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. And I'm going to go in my library module. Uh, here's the photo we were just looking at. And then these nine images are from a sequence that I shot last night. And to blend them, what I'm going to do is go up into Photo and select Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Okay, so Lightroom will then automatically open Photoshop and create a single file with nine layers, each layer being a different image from that sequence. So through the magic of video editing, Photoshop has loaded each of these nine images as a layer, one stacked upon the other. So why are we doing this? Well, first of all, uh, the exposure settings that I used last night to make each image is that uh, I'm using a full-frame digital SLR camera, Nikon D610, and a Tamron 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens. The lens was at 200 millimeters and wide open at f2.8. Now normally during the daytime, with the sun out and everything well lit, at 200 millimeters f2.8, you can use an exposure, uh, a shutter speed of what, one two thousandth of a second at your lowest ISO setting and make a lovely image with great detail and almost no noise. But this comet's visible at night against a dark sky and it's inherently faint and so even with a four second long shutter speed opening and that shutter for four seconds and exposing the sensor for that amount of time and a lens at f2.8 I'm not capturing much light each individual photograph has a lot of noise in it and so by stacking these photos what I'm going to do is reduce the noise in the finished composite image. The second thing we're overcoming is the fact that during even the roughly 30 seconds, uh, or excuse me, 45 seconds that it takes the camera to shoot a nine exposure set of, with each uh, photograph having a shutter speed of four seconds, Earth is rotating, so the stars are moving due to that rotation, and the comet's moving through the sky and through space, and it even moves a little bit. And so there's some alignment that we're going to do in order to allow these photographs to stack uh, and be aligned with each other. So let's get into that. Let's see how that works. So here's the first photograph in the set. And first thing I'm going to do is go up to layer. I'm gonna add a layer mask and reveal all. So what this layer mask does is <clears throat> it tells Photoshop with this uh, white mask over this image, I want to see this mask, this photograph completely. But in order to blend these photographs, what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to each one that will uh, be not white in color uh, and not black in color, which would block Photoshop from revealing that image. It would show the image below instead. But what I'm going to do is change the color to a gray color. And let's take a look at why that is the case. So um, <clears throat> in Photoshop, uh, 
with a white background, you can see the RGB values for that is 255, 255, 255. If we were to set this, uh, the color we're going to use with our brush to paint the mask to black, the RGB values are 000. So what we're going to do is select a color for the brush that we'll use to paint the mask that will be halfway in between 255 and all zeros. And so what I'm going to do is click over here on the left side and drag around until I get to 123. Okay, so I'm actually 122. So I'm about almost exactly halfway between 0 and 255. So this is a gray that's going to be basically 50% transparency. And so this layer will be, 50% of this layer will be visible, and so will 50% of the layer beneath it. So I'm going to click OK. That's going to be the color that I select. I'm going to go up to my brush tool. I'm going to select that. And so here's my brush. And I'm going to paint over the mask layer. You're not seeing the photo being affected because I'm, I don't have the photo itself selected. I have the mask layer selected, and so that's what's been painted to make look gray. And now this layer immediately beneath is 50% revealed. So let's view this at 100% and see what that looks like. So here are the stars, and during the time between exposures, the second exposure, the stars were in a slightly different position. So what I'm going to do is align the two photos by aligning the stars. I'm going to go up to my Move tool, and I'm just going to use the cursors on my keyboard, select this photograph, and shift until we get good alignment with the photo above. And I'm going to toggle the visibility of the top layer and go back and forth between. And if I see any shift in position, between the stars, I know I'll need to make an adjustment on the position of the second photo. That actually looks pretty good. So now I'm going to do this for every other layer. So layer, layer mask, reveal all. It's white. I'm going to go up to the brush tool and I'm going to view, select fit on screen. We're going to brush over. We're brushing over the mask again and we're making it 50% transparent. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect this middle layer because what I want to do is see where this photograph aligns with respect to the top layer. So now I'm going to select the bottom layer that we're looking at, go to view 100%, click on my move tool, and use my cursors again to align the stars. Once I think I've gotten alignment, again I'll toggle the top layer and make a little bit of an adjustment there. I think I've got good alignment with now these two layers. So again, layer, mask, reveal all. <clears throat> select my brush tool, go back to view, fit on screen, paint over the mask layer so that again we've got the 50% transparency. Deselect all the image layers between the top layer and the layer that I'm working on now. Go back to view 100%, select my move tool. Move the stars until the, those stars align. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna skip forward, uh, so you don't need to see every layer being done like this. But let's uh, skip forward to this full collection where every layer has been added, so we can see how this looks. Okay, and here we go. We've got all nine layers stacked and aligned, and. Uh, the top eight layers have a 50% visibility mask over them, so we're blending across all nine layers. 
So let's zoom into 100%. And you can see that the stars are nicely aligned. Uh, they're still looking sharp, well-defined. We're not seeing ghosting from intermediate layers that aren't properly aligned. Now let's go ahead and deselect all these top layers so we're looking at just the bottom layer. And look at all the noise and irregularity in that very bottom image all by its lonesome. But as we add the layers above, the quality of that night sky becomes much smoother, creamier, less noise, less distracting. If we go back to a fit on screen view, one of the things you can see is along the edges, you can see those, that as a result of moving the layers to get them aligned, we now have the bottom and right hand edge that are uh, where there's no content here. And so at this point, what I'm going to do is blend all the, is merge all the layers to create a single image. So we'll go up to layer, merge visible. It's going to create a single image. I'm going to go layer and I'm going to flatten the image. And at this point, I'm going to use my crop tool and I'm going to hold down the shift button, holding down the shift button because I want to maintain a certain aspect ratio on the photograph. We'll go up to the upper right hand corner here, do a little cropping here as well. <clears throat> Hit the enter button and boom, we've got a cropped single layer image. And Again, if we zoom in to 100%, the layers are still al aligned and the noise level in the background is just much better than with the single photograph. So at this point, what we can do is save the image as, um, I'll do a file, save as. And what I'm going to do is choose TIFF as a format and I've got a file name uh, where it begins with uh, the number of the first image in the sequence and the number of the last image in the sequence. <clears throat> and I'm just going to add a uh, comment <clears throat> here so we can save this image. We'll use just the basic settings, so it's going to take a little bit for Photoshop to finish the save. That is done, so now if we go back to Lightroom, and in this uh, collection, what I'm going to do is select Import. So I want to add the uh, TIFF file that we just saved. And so the import window is going to ask me to select a source. So I'm scrolling down. Here's the folder where all the photographs from last night are kept. And this is the one photograph in that folder that has not been imported into my Lightroom catalog. So it's automatically identifying this one and checking it and saying, hey, is this the one you want to import? And so I'm going to say, you betcha. So here's that photo. Uh, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to add it to a target collection. The collection that uh, we've been working in that shows the, the nine photos from last night that we used to make this stacked blended single image. I set that as a target collection so that when I add this one, now I can go to my personal collections, Comet Neowise, and here we go, DSC 1183 to 1191 tutorial TIFF. And at this point now, we're ready to do whatever processing that we want to do in order to create the finished image. It's, it's a little bit of a time-consuming process, 
but it's not all that difficult to do, particularly with this kind of photography where we have all these bright points of light, the stars that we can use, uh, really any one of them as an alignment tool in order to align those layers that are stacked one atop the other. Once that alignment is complete, then uh, the process I use is to uh, merge all the visible layers and uh, flatten the image and then save that single image as a TIFF file so that I have all the raw data in that image that I can work with in Lightroom to do the processing to create a final look that's to my liking. And again, from last night, here's the photograph. That was the final product of that effort. So thanks for watching and uh, good luck with your comet photography.